Okay, very good morning to everyone. Hope you're doing well. It's Friday, 25th of September. Um, back by popular demand after last week's guest appearance, I have Sam North. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a pleasure, Sam. Um, I think people really appreciated your look through of the charts um, last Friday. So what we'll do is stick to the same kind of game plan as, as normal. I'll go through some of the, the clothes on Wall Street, what's happened overnight in Asia, uh, and then generally some of the new stories in play and what we're looking out for for the day ahead, and then I'll hand it over to you. But please do interject at any point if you uh, want to add your view or anything like that. Um, I'm going to throw in a little bit of Trump holding a campaign rally, lots of social uh, distancing being adhered to last night. So uh, good to get your thoughts on that. But um, let's have a look quick at the charts as usual. Uh, I guess that gives you a good sense of general sentiment at the open. And as you can see, uh, the Dixie's flat, and that's largely reflected in the major currency pairs in the top left in euro and sterling. Uh, gold down a touch, but fairly sideways overnight, down five bucks at 1871. Uh, equity index futures, US pretty flat, um, DAX up, but has been drifting lower uh, just as we go through the European Open. Um, crude also just Drift, drifting a little bit back towards 40 bucks down here at the bottom, but only a loss of 13 cents. And T-notes really are not doing anything and haven't done for the last couple of days at all. Super tight ranges there. Um, to give you a bit of a flavor, um, we obviously had a positive close on Wall Street. Saw a really decent bounce actually um, yesterday. We were looking at those levels. Uh, this is that daily continuation chart where we had marked up on that rectangle. Uh, a decent area of support around the 3200, 3192, actually marking uh, the area of support that was seen in mid and late July. And the market really responding to that quite nicely yesterday, uh, as we were talking about in the briefing. And in terms of the US close, the S&P and the cash finished up 0.3%. Uh, the NASDAQ as well, seeing a pretty decent bounce. This is the, the chart again that we were looking at. It didn't get as far down as to really coming to the more interesting or solid levels of 100 DMA respectively in this index and the late July lows because we were just respected and bounced off that um, low that we saw on Monday on that initial volatility at the beginning of the week. So that's still holding and remains a key line of support on the downside as too does the rectangle still on the intraday session if things start to sour in sentiment. But overall, we had a higher close on Wall Street across the three indices as I said, the SPU's up 0.3, NASDAQ up, the usual kind of minor outperformance up 0.6, Dow up about two tenths of 1%. Now, you know, why the bounce? Well, a couple of things. Um, the House Democrats, so let me just switch over to some slides, uh, just transition. So the House Democrats now have started drafting a stimulus proposal of roughly $2.4 trillion that could take into possible negotiations with the White House and Senate Republicans, according to House Democratic officials. And remember, it, one of the main talking points, of course, of what had been uh, seen as a contributing factor to uh, some of the downside inequities of late has been the lack of willingness and forthcoming of stimulus coming out of the US, particularly with the side tracking of now the Supreme Court nomination with the death of Gin uh, Ginsburg being such a uh, a key point of contention now for the ultimate outcome and post US election environment. That's kind of de detracted then from getting a deal done, which is more fiscal stimulus. Uh, obviously, one person who's been banging the drum for more, certainly aside from politicians, has been Jerome Powell. He's kind of had a busy week um, speaking to various different uh, political uh, groups. And he continues to call on the need and necessity for fiscal stimulus. So this is quite a positive development overall. Certainly probably helps stabilise things yesterday and contributed to some of the rise. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi reiterated she is ready to negotiate it with the White House on that proposal. However, the, the, the bill could get passed in the House next week, but Trump has indicated he's willing to go only as high as one and a half trillion at this point. But I guess what the people are taking some uh, positive out of is the fact that they've gone from basically around five to 600 billion to three and a half trillion. Now we're arriving at a number that's a little bit closer into the territory of potential deal making, I guess is what the, the general perception is. 
Um, also, separately, another thing that contributed to a little bit of risk off uh, in the last 48 hours or so had been the fact that Trump basically said he wouldn't go quietly and hand over a smooth transition of power if he lost the election. But Republican lawmakers yesterday also vowed that the president's transition after the November election will occur without disruption, basically uh, rebuking what Trump said yesterday about his refusal to commit to that peaceful transfer of power. So a couple of things there um, just to be aware of. Uh, but otherwise, the other kind of stories that I'm looking at this morning are from a dollar perspective in the FX markets. I know um, Sam will probably talk about this a lot more, but really nice chart that was shared by Alex and the team this morning. And he's been talking to the guys already very early about the, the dollar index. Uh, and technically, the dollar index is at a really uh, quite interesting level. Um, the dollar has actually put in its best week this week since April. And you remember what was happening in eight, March, April. That was obviously when the world was in full fear, global pandemic kind of meltdown. And obviously everyone was flocking to the dollar at that initial phase. Um, and we've seen the best gain in the last couple of sessions since that point. Now, where we're at at the moment, though, is interesting. Starting to look a little bit overbought. And technically, you've got that initial... Uh, low that was seen here going all the way back to when the pandemic volatility was really um, kicking in. And then that goes all the way back to really 2018 price action. So it'd be interesting to see how it responds here. Uh, definitely will be quite key, of course, for the major currency pairs. But also, I think it's going to be quite key for the prospects for precious metals. You know, one of the main reasons why I think precious metals have come under such aggressive selling pressure of late and going to switch it over to, to gold here. Gold's gone from basically an area of quite extreme range, but ultimately I'd say consolidation after the big shakeout we had in the beginning of August. But it's quietly just continued to move lower amid certainly some of this dollar strength. And this week is no different. At the beginning of the week, we were trading around 1920. And now we're trading down at around 1872, having printed as low as sub 1850 uh, this week. And so a turnabout in the dollar will be quite important for supporting um, these precious metals, which have been under pressure. Now, technically, uh, these are charts I was sharing yesterday. You've got this area uh, going back to really July of consolidation that would be a key area of support here on the downside. But if we're looking at silver, um, also from a technical perspective, the 100 DMA uh, has provided quite a, a nice area alongside this trend line that I've been keeping an eye on from the March activity for when precious metals started to really get fired up um, post initially the pandemic sell-off that we were seeing. And after the initial flurry that was seen on Thursday session, we're respecting back onto that trend line. So we're interested to see where things close out the week. Uh, the reason why as well to talk about the precious metals is that Commerce Bank, the German bank, they came out um, they've had a research note released overnight and they've said silver and gold have been oversold and the positive environment for the metals has not changed. It'll be hard for the dollar to sustain its gains given the fact that the Federal Reserve has pledged to stick to its expansionary monetary policy. Uh, and again, I, you know, I do agree. I mean, timing, of course, is important when these banks put out these notes. They're not talking so much about the intraday session. They're talking about just generally over the kind of medium term. Uh, but I, I kind of agree. I mean, and interestingly, technically, the Dixie here is at quite a key level of resistance now, having shot, broke out of this uh, era of consolidation uh, over the last couple of weeks and months. So uh, we'll be interested to see if this provides then a bit of a footing, if that does hold for these precious metals, which have been ultimately under quite a bit of pressure uh, in recent sessions. Um, other things I wanted to talk about, uh, sticking with the US theme, there was a note out of Goldman Sachs uh, there's a lot of people talking about the fact that, um, and this has been reflected somewhat in market positioning, particularly in, in options, for example, about the type of volatility that we could see, not so much on the election night itself, but the period thereafter, given the mail-in uh, ballot system is likely to uh, result in a lot of uncertainties around getting the actual formality of, of who's won the election. But Goldman's have come out in their latest note, and it's kind of a little bit against the general consensus. They're saying that traders need to reduce their expectation 
that a delayed US election result would upend markets. They said that a uh, delayed outcome is a tail risk, um, but a combination of early results, voter turnout, county level data, and high correlation of polling errors across states suggest investors will have enough information on election night to determine the likely victor. So that's quite different from what others have said. I mean, I hope it's like that. I love a little 24 hour all night session um, doing these big events because it was looking a little bit likely that a lot of that general overnight activity might have been diminished by the fact that it's going to be a quite a protracted uh, event that will unfold over several weeks. But GS saying for those aforementioned reasons that we might have enough information on hand though to draw some conclusions. I guess it depends how tight the actual um, votes and information we have at hand at that point uh, suggest. Uh, so yeah, just like to, to note, um, on the Brexit side of things, um, uh, Brexit, I guess, has been, I mean, it's so interesting, isn't it? Two weeks ago, everyone was talking about Brexit, coronavirus spikes, and it's like, what, there's Brexit? What's that thing? So it's amazing how blinkered and uh, the market becomes. You know, you have uh, obviously the Chancellor unveils more formally all of the things that we were already kind of aware of yesterday in terms of uh, his plan for jobs and so on and the economy going forward. Um, but the Brexit headlines probably likely to come back to the forefront next week. Um, Michelle Barnier and David Frost are scheduled to resume negotiations on Tuesday, just as a heads up. Barnier told EU diplomats this week that Johnson's move, this rewriting of the withdrawal agreement, uh, had left some bad feeling, but the atmosphere between negotiators remained constructive. So they're continuing to push on, irrespective of some of the initial threats about what Johnson was doing by breaking international law and so on. Uh, seemingly, there's enough will on both sides to continue these talks to try and broker a deal, which obviously it's not just about penalising Britain, this is in the best interest of both countries or areas to strike a deal here. Um, the one thing, though, we've only got around two weeks now until uh, the self-imposed uh, UK PM's own October 15th deadline to reach a deal. Now, I would say that's not going to happen. <laughs> so that doesn't mean, though, that that's instantly going to start seeing the pound coming under immediate pressure. Um, several officials have already warned the negotiation could now stretch into November or even December. Now that does put an incredibly tight turnaround on trying to what had been a mid-October commitment to then get it ratified across Europe and elsewhere in time for the end of transition at year end. But uh, you know, I'm pretty confident that I think that these talks will go into November for sure. And it could even go even later. Does that mean that there's a cliff edge type end of end of year scenario? Well, look, the goalposts have moved with this multiple times and they will move again. So at the end of the day, um, I'm not expecting any amazing movement at the last moment here um, to actually get a, an actual deal confirmed in October. I do think it is going to drag on a little bit longer, but I don't think that necessarily means that right, that's it. There's no, there's going to be no deal. Uh, I think they'll just make a deal later on. I still think base case, they do secure a deal in the end. Um, just wanted a quick word on the COVID situation. Um, as far as COVID is concerned, um, the UK reported its highest number of new cases in a single day since the start of the pandemic. However, uh, as I was kind of suggesting yesterday, I think you've got to look a little bit beyond that because the first wave case numbers of kind of peaking at 6,000 in, in April time uh, are not really reflective of probably the underlying situation was ultimately way higher than that. So I think it's a bit of a, a media spin to start talking about it. I wouldn't overstress that. The more important thing is though, UK rates are accelerating very quickly and are likely to continue to do so going forward. France, new infections have jumped to a record. Uh, one of the questions I had, I did um, uh, what we call like a masterclass on our platform um, last night, yesterday evening with a group of traders. And they, uh, part of the conversation was about COVID. And they were asking me like, you know, things are obviously getting worse. 
you know, at what point, what would you look for as a trigger then for markets to start becoming a bit apprehensive again about COVID? And for me, even though mainland Europe and UK is deteriorating at the moment, and this definitely is having an impact on expectations about the kind of shape and speed of the recovery, it's the US, which ultimately is the most important. And at the moment, the US generally has not been following the trend that's been materializing this side of the pond. Now, one thing, though, to be aware of is that US new cases did actually rise last week after falling for two months straight. So in America, the reason why the markets generally have been okay, yes, we've seen some downside, people getting a little bit worried about a lack of forthcoming stimulus. Generally, COVID numbers have been going down, and this is a net positive for, for general markets. However, last week, and more recently, there's been a few signs that US numbers are starting to pick up ever so slightly. Not enough yet, I think, to spook people. But what I'm saying is, Will COVID become a new dominant theme to really weigh on market sentiment? For me, only if US numbers start to rise meaningfully and consistently. And we're not seeing that yet, but it definitely now is starting to come up on my radar a little bit more. Health experts believe that the recent spike was uh, coinciding with the reopening of schools and universities, as well as the parties that were happening over Labor Day, of course, if you think about the incubation period, um, that was a big worry for some people about people adhering, obviously, to social distancing and various restrictions was probably unlikely to happen on what otherwise is a, a public holiday in America. The one particular region, if we look at the US, is the mid states. So all Midwest states, except Ohio, have reported more cases in the past four weeks than the prior four weeks. Now, a lot of this, again, is to do with social distancing. Uh, the reason for that is because there's an annual motorcycle rally in South Dakota, of which attracts annually hundreds of thousands of visitors. Uh, and that is said to have caused some of that latest movement. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to explain what's going on on that side of things. Um, the US CDC director has said that COVID-19 vaccine will likely not be widely available until summer or the fall of 2021. So I'm not putting a great deal of weight just in this one person. Obviously, we have to layer in what authorities and bodies are saying with what pharmaceuticals are trialing and how that's um, progressing at this point in time. But it's quite interesting because a summer or fall of 2021 for a vaccine, according to the director of the uh, CDC in the US, is way later than generally where market consensus lays, which is more like Q1, Q2 of 21. Uh, so that's the other you know, quite important thing to be aware of. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to show as well, when it comes to US and social distancing, I, I have to just quickly Sorry to, to interrupt, you just need to, to share the screen. Sorry. Yeah, I just want to show... Um, this um thank you florida make america great again uh, these are all genuine photos from last night and uh this was at an airport hangar in florida wow. um, i can see everyone's got their face masks on quite obviously <laughs> but it's just uh i mean it is quite quite unbelievable when you think about we are in the middle of a global pandemic at the moment to see this type of activity. However, you know, I think you've got to cut between the kind of the noise. I mean, this isn't like propaganda. This is shared by Donald Trump himself. So it's not like it's uh, the left, liberal left trying to catch him out. The, the, the important thing here is the area. This is Florida, right? And Florida is ultimately one of the most important battlegrounds uh, in terms of the college, um, the, the college votes that it counts for, which is where really the balance of power is, not the popular vote, Florida, obviously, given its large population, is one of the highest in terms of its um, college votes. So it's intrinsic. This always ends up being a definitive key battleground. And at the moment, it is pretty close. And so Trump is really going out there and doing everything he can to try and uh, to try and get this back in his favor, because at the moment, Biden is just leading it ever so slightly in recent polling. So for me, this is all, you know, he, he, he does this on purpose, of course, 
This is to really kind of galvanize the base. Also as well, he's, he's increased the frequency of tweeting about law and order. Uh, you've probably seen there's been lots of uh, social unrest across America with more the same repeat of white police killing, um, I guess, inappropriate use of power against black individuals has happened multiple times again. Um, so the law and order mantra is becoming ever more prevalent just given what's happening. And so, yeah, uh, I wouldn't, as much as I, I think that this is probably not particularly useful for controlling a pandemic, which is so, showing some fairly uh, suspect signs of increasing in certain areas in the US and Florida was one of the Sun Belt states that was hit quite bad. I would definitely be interested to keep an eye on the numbers that start coming out in the coming weeks. But you've got to understand the amount of political importance that this area takes. And obviously, he wants to make a real statement piece uh, out of this. Um, but yeah, quick look at the calendar, just to wrap things up. And I'll, I'll hand you over to Sam. Um, today is actually from a uh, schedule, super quiet. Um, UK public finance data, uh, Europe M3 annual growth, none of that's gonna move markets. Quarterly bulletin out of the UK as well as a non-market mover. So the only real thing you've got is durable goods coming out in the States for the month of August. Make a huge rig count for any uh, oil traders. A couple of Fed speakers, Fed Williams is a voter speaking twice um, in the afternoon and then in the evening if you're UK based. Uh, so maybe worth just keeping an eye on. But a lot of Fed speak this week. I wouldn't say anyone's particularly changed the needle or moved the needle too much. So uh, with that, uh, that's my piece done. I'll hand you over to Sam uh, to go over the charts. Thank you very much, Anne. And um, I think it's it's interesting, one, the, the quiet calendar, which I'll come on to, but also the, uh, if you, I can just have post, um, yep for sharing but also the just the, the equity markets recently i've had a, a lot of mates as, which is always the case whenever the markets come under pressure i always get my mates saying what's going on in the markets what's the reason we're, we're coming down is it is it due to you know numbers spiking up in europe and you know it's it might have a tiny bit uh in the way of, of a reason behind it but for me it's all about the the us dollar and absolutely if, if the us numbers you know, really do start to pick up that is going to weigh on things, whether the US do anything about it or not is, a, is another question. But for me, yeah, the US dollar is really having uh, an impact across all markets. You, you talked about gold and silver uh, and how they had a little bite uh, uh, lower to then, you know, recover yesterday and, and euro dollar is, is the same. And it's almost like the, the Fed meeting was was that what sent markets lower, the, the you know, the the reluctance to do anything more just yet. And I think there's still a bit more to go, to be honest. I'm, I'm not sure markets are low enough for Jerome Powell to come out and, and deliver another bazooka. So how do we, we look at that from a technical point of view? Well, look, it's the, it's the last day of the week. So therefore we're gonna be looking at weekly closes. And, and as long as the Euro, for you know, looking here at uh, dollar bulls, as long as the Euro finishes below you know, this highlighted area, this trend line, I think the, the bears are gonna be really happy. You know. To finish, what day was that? The 22nd below there was key. We then had some continued selling the next day. Okay, a little bit of pause, a bit of profit taking for those that are um, you know, happy enough with this push through. And as long as it stays back below sort of 117 and a half, I think that the, you know, this, this market can continue to go lower. It just might be that you know, with a quiet calendar, with you know, a bit of profit taking into the end of the week, we do have a bit of recovery, which is going to aid all the other dollar related pairs, which just so happens to be a lot of the markets at the moment as they're sort of moving off that. So yeah, Euro dollar looks good. I mean, look, 115 is, is sort of talks about as the, the next area that we come to. Uh, and we might well look back and, and say, well, look, when the market was at the high, there's one person that's moved everything and that's ECB's lane with one comment. And we're now all the way back down here. We'll have to uh, see how that pans out, of course, over the coming weeks. The euro then on that 60 minute, uh, and this is just bringing in the pivot points now. You can see it's got a fair bit of room to go to the upside uh, to retest that whole area, that level resistance. We'll have a look at the pound in, the mo in a moment, but that did exactly the same. Broke a massively key level of support, ground higher for about four, possibly even five days before then really pushing lower again. So yeah, for the Euro, it wouldn't surprise me to see 
you know, today and Monday, a grind higher, like Alex has been talking about in our, in our uh, Amplify Live trading room, the, the dollar index is, um, you know, it's over, overbought, for, uh, for example. So it has, uh, you know, on the short term, so it can have a little bit of a pullback potentially. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at the pound then on that longer time frame going into the end of the week. Obviously, it's going to be key. And, and this is what I was talking about in that that support level breaks and then one, two, three, four. You know, you could argue the fifth morning there as well. It did push higher, only to then come back lower, break the low of the month. And now we're just trying to find a bit of, a bit of support uh, on this market. And you can see it's a significant level here for, for the pound. Decision time for sure has got to take place. And I was posting this on, on Twitter yesterday, just the significance of this whole area. You can see why uh, it is, uh, be, well, we found support there. You can see the resistance, triple top from 9th of July to the two days that follow, turns into support, then we hit it again. For a close of the week perspective, you know, the, the, if there are any uh, pound bulls, they want price above that. But that may well see uh, other, you know, pairs against the pound, uh, other crosses actually push higher uh, as we see a bit of pound strength on this support and a bit of dollar weakness potentially today. That's how I see things uh, falling out for, for the remainder of the pound here. You can see that sort of comes to fruition if we do break above today's R1, yesterday's high, Thursday's high, the low that we had on the 21st. You want a great level, great line in the sand, that is it there. There's nothing to say that we don't find resistance here, start drifting lower, the euro does the same, and then we see dollar strength into the close of the week and it gets ugly elsewhere. But if we start to see a push above here, I think we can get a, a quicker move towards that, that R2. But no means does that mean that the dollar is now going to weaken for a period of time. It just means I think that we're going to have a little bit of a break. Gold, you can see yesterday, found support and is, well, at the moment, slightly up. But this looks okay for those people that potentially wanted to go long. I don't necessarily think waiting for 1828, the highs that we had back from April is a bad, bad move. I think we could still get there. Uh, you can also see silver, like you mentioned, uh, just pushing lower. And, you know, this was, was something that I was looking at uh, when I did the masterclass two weeks ago in the false break of 26 and the false break for gold on uh, 1900. Both never really took place. Uh, and you know, dollar weakness would obviously help that come through. But yeah, silver finding a bit of support. If it can finish above twenty three seventy seven, you know, that would be you know a minor win for, for for silver. And then we could potentially start to see a push higher. But at the moment, if uh, if I was a, a dollar bull, I'm happy regardless of a of a move higher. Let's have a then a flip over to to look at the S and P. Like you mentioned, the hundred day moving averages across the board weren't too far away. Uh, and we found some good support um, yesterday. Decent pop higher. It's not out of the woods, of course. Let's just get the moving averages on as well, the 50, 21, and, and 200. The 50-day moving average has, has been key for, for this market, so I would keep a, a watch on that. More importantly, and I'll come back to the S&P, the Dow Jones, you can see the 50-day a couple of days ago was the top, and it's been incredibly well-respected. So. You're trading the Dow on your longer time frame. Keep a, a watch on that. And obviously the, the NASDAQ, you can see exactly the same. So yeah, they're, they're looking at 50 days. So we're going to look at it. Um, so keep a watch on that. Keep it marked up on your longer time frames. Going into then the, the close of the week. Uh, and I think, you know, there there is a bit more downside in this market. Uh, and, you know, it's not panic stations at all. For I think it's healthy. I think we still finish the year uh, on the highs, a bit of that, you know, does depend on, on Trump winning the election for me. Uh, but is it panic stations if we're only 9.4% off a high? I don't think so. I think the dollar, you know, was, you know, under pressure for quite some time, strengthened. This is obviously going to bring all markets lower and, and it's healthy enough. I think, you know, from a, a support point of view, and I did get a tiny bit long yesterday on the 100-day moving average on the S&P. But I have got this area marked up here, 31.75. You can see a nice area of support around here. It turns out to be you know, another area where price has reacted quite strongly to. So that's something I'd be looking at. To the flip side, if we do get above the 50-day moving average, you know, then you're going to come to the 21. You know, If you remember when we did the, 
the live uh, FOMC on, was it the 16th of September? It must be. Yeah, 16th, basically, when all markets turn. I was saying if we finish above 34, uh, well, this, these, these uh, recent highs, we're going to all time highs. That didn't happen. And you can see we pushed lower. So that's another one, you know, just area to be aware of. As we go into the shorter time frame now on the, the S&P and start marking up some of these levels, let me just bring in the pivot points. You can see there is another key point today that from a bullish point of view that might support yesterday being a short term low. We would need to get above today's R1, the support point from Wednesday almost turned to the high yesterday. That really, for me, is, is a key line in the sand where if we can get above there, the bulls feel a bit more confident. But as mentioned elsewhere, I think the test is going to come if the dollar weakens over the next couple of days when it comes into very key resistance or say euro dollar, what that is then going to lead to for the rest of the market. And it's going to be really really interesting another market just to, to wrap up for you and i've got obviously oil here and you can see this on this is put let me remove some of these studies we'll have a look at this on on the, the uh on the daily chart and bring that in obviously like you said it was just flirting around that sort of 40 bucks this is how we finished last week you know on these previous highs that we had turns into be you know really nice resistance i think anyone sort of bearish oil at the moment can still be happy enough and, and stops will be above there for sure. So, you know, this is almost how I potentially see euro dollar panning out. I know it's a completely different market, but the dollar has got some sort of weight on commodity pricing here. So the breakthrough comes back to find resistance and we can then start to maybe push lower as we go into the close of the week. Let's put this onto the, the 60 minute, uh, bring in the pivots just for a bit more context, you can see like the S&P, like Euro, like Pound, just above where we're trading, there is a massive resistance where any bulls are going to want uh, price to get above. So we've got the S&P, the R1, uh, oil, the R1, uh, obviously similar for NASDAQ and Dow, and also the Pound where we're just trading uh, almost now as well. You can see just above uh, this point here. This would be a minor victory for anyone that wants to go along these markets. On the flip side, for continued downside today, I think those levels uh, have to hold. Thank you, uh, Ant, for inviting me on. Always a pleasure, never a chore. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, um, yeah, if anyone's got any comments for us at all, if you're watching this on, on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I know Sam always puts out a video on a Sunday as well where he'll go over similar to what he's just done there for the week ahead. You know, that in combination, and I guess with the briefing I do on a Monday, it's kind of a great way to, to, to start the week, we hope, for you guys. Uh, but any comments on this video, just drop a comment and we'll reply throughout the day. But otherwise, thank you, Sam, and have a great weekend. Okay, guys.